Hey everybody and welcome back to another video of mine. So as you can see here, I'm on update 2020.32.3. Now, uh, this only applies to my Tesla and after getting serviced, if you've seen my other videos, I'll just do a quick rundown of what happened. But um, in one of my services, after I got done, for whatever reason, the steering wheel nag went away when you're in autopilot. So it no longer has me touch the wheel every 30 seconds. and so it's kind of an interesting thing to have happen. Um, I, I can't say I'm complaining about it because I do like that I don't have to pay attention to the steering wheel as much. But one of the things that I also found out here, and as I'll, I'll pull this up for you guys, on autopilot, navigate on autopilot, um, I turned lane change confirmation off and then lane change notification. And the reason I did that is I actually wanna see how well the autopilot system will actually work. Now, not everybody can do this. I'm not sure if people modify their Teslas to do this or if there's anything like that. I'm not very technical when it comes to the Tesla system um, and what you can and can't do with it. But with mine, since the steering wheel nag is gone, I figured this would be the perfect opportunity to test on the newest update how well it'll autopilot me back to my house. So in this video, I'm gonna do just that. Now, once again, it's not this update that made this happen. This is the third update I've done with no steering wheel nag still. So once again, it happened after service. Don't know what happened, but uh, not sad about it. But I want to show you guys what, you know, autonomy on the freeway would look like. And I'm actually going to talk over to what I do and don't like about it because there are... It, it does some weird stuff when it's lane changing. I'll just say that. All right, so we're just getting up to the freeway. I'm gonna hop us on the freeway and then um, this might be a little tutorial for those of you who already own a Tesla or those that are gonna get a Tesla. I do have my house programmed into the Navigate. And so um, as soon as we're up on the freeway, I don't want it to take me this way because it's actually a longer way, but Tesla likes to take um, the freeway heading this way. And I want it to take me on this route here. I'm gonna set autopilot and then you'll see that I'm not gonna do, I'm not gonna have any steering wheel checks. It, um, if you don't know what that looks like, um, you can look in previous videos. I have the steering wheel check before um, these updates and stuff, but when you have the steering wheel check, it'll flash blue right here. And I don't have that anymore. And so I also have it so it'll take HOV lanes. I have a carpool lane pass. So uh, I don't think you guys can see it, but it's right up here. And so it'll it'll get in and out of the HOV lane and that's where you're gonna see it do some weird stuff. Unless in this update, it's a little bit better, which I'm hoping. I'm gonna set the speed limit to 80 miles an hour. Let's hope that, you know, I don't go past any cops. It's usually a good speed to go because people get a little irritated with you if you're a little less, but all right. We're gonna start it here. Um, it's pulling up my address. So now that I swiped, you're gonna see navigate on autopilot comes up which navigate on autopilot is uh, part of the package you have to get. So everybody has just regular autopilot and it'll lane change with that if you hit the blinker. This is actually full self-driving me at the moment. And since I don't have steering wheel nag, I can put my hands anywhere, do whatever I want, and it's not gonna do it. So uh, looks like we're gonna be heading at a good speed. Um, I also wanna see how it reacts with people coming up on you, if it's gonna move me out of the lane. I've never really tested how intuitive navigate on autopilot is. And there might be a spot that I'm gonna have to touch the steering wheel just to change the speed. But as you can see, there's a gap between me and the steering wheel. I don't have anything on the steering wheel. Nothing's holding it. Uh, steering wheel nag should happen within 30 seconds. Should have happened already, right? And so you can clearly see that for whatever reason, my Tesla, and I'm gonna caveat this a lot because I feel like people think uh, when I update this, I'm saying your update will have the same features or whatever's going on. It won't, um, not unless whatever happened to yours happened to mine. Um, I thought the updates would fix it. It didn't ever fix it. So it actually makes it cool because I can test this out. Now, Elon Musk in an article talked about how his Tesla can get him to and from his house almost completely with no intervention, meaning he doesn't have to hit the blinker, doesn't have to touch the steering wheel. Um, he, of course, runs an alpha version. But the other cool thing about that to me is he's been driving the Cybertruck, which I've got a Cybertruck on order. Uh, Laura and I 
pre-ordered the tri-motor cyber truck which is a totally other conversation that i'd love to have or actually you know let's talk about it in this video but um some of the things that have been coming up is the size of the battery like how can you get 500 plus mile range with the battery and have it still only cost seventy thousand dollars and i think there's a lot of different reasons you know cutting costs obviously it's going to be easier to make the cyber truck uh the alloys and stuff they, they aren't gonna have to press you know it's obviously got the old school delorean shape from back to the future type esque truck and so it's going to be a little bit less than you know taking an actual shape and form and putting a lot of pieces together since it has that exoskeleton it's going to be a lot heavier so that's going to be the other part to how it's going to deal with the weight um that's another big argument that people have is how is it going to get 500 miles of range with how heavy it's going to be and my guess is that elon musk since he has the prototype version and they said that it was the the middle tier so the dual motor one he's probably getting you know around what we would get in this maybe less because of the weight okay so now it's changing lanes which is awesome because i got this amazon van that's uh on my tail right now at 80 miles an hour once again didn't have to intervene because i turned that off i'm literally letting the tesla drive however it wants and uh, i would imagine this is exactly how it would be with full autonomy minus i could get on the freeway through stoplights and you know the part of my drive that goes through residential areas it would be able to think for itself in this case it thinks for itself on the freeway and that's it so getting onto the freeway and getting off of the freeway is where it will uh, make those decisions so uh, theoretically this should be able to get me all the way off of my exit getting to my house we'll see how it does there's a construction area i've had it in multiple videos before it gets kind of dicey and that's the only time that i think i'll touch the the speed on the steering wheel because i won't want it to go as fast uh, through that as it would want to go through that Now, I, I do want to hear what other people think about the Cybertruck. What are your thoughts on, you know, how they're going to make that range be good? Okay, so see, it's it's having me come over here again. I'm still kind of cutting off this Amazon van, but, um, you know, it's kind of funny because it didn't want to go fast until I got in front of it. So let's see how much it comes up on me. Yeah, see, it's it's going to go around me on this side. Your, your Tesla's kind of a jerk in that way me as a human being probably wouldn't have cut them off oh it's not even a it's not even a amazon delivery van usually they have those okay so it's moving back over it knows that we're being a jerk at least to this person behind but uh waiting for that van to go I don't know how many of my viewers have been in Utah or live near Utah, but I swear we have some of the fastest drivers out here. I would think that a 70 mile an hour zone going 80 miles an hour, which is what I usually set, is pretty fast, but uh, most of the time I'm still getting smoked by people. So uh, Utah drivers like to drive fast. I'm included in that, obviously. I, I set it at 80 miles an hour. For a test like this, you kind of have to. So. Um, as you can see, still no intervention with the steering wheel. I've got the, the rear view camera up. I don't know if you guys like that. Let me know in the comments if you like having the rear view camera up or if you like the map up. Um, I can always change it to whichever one is uh, more pleasing. Sometimes I like this because I can see whether it's going to stay in the lines or how well it does. One of the things I noticed in this latest update is it doesn't bob and weave as much in, in the lane. Usually if any of you have been in a tesla or own one you know about the weaving that i'm talking about it'll usually guide itself this updates kept it pretty dang close in the center like look at this it's not really moving from those spots so okay i was wondering when it was going to start having me move over there's going to be a couple tricky spots here for the tesla and um the traffic isn't nearly as bad I, I leave from Salt Lake to head back to, you know, Utah County area in Utah at about two o'clock. And so it doesn't really get too heavy of traffic. If I leave anywhere after 3.30 though, it's, it gets pretty heavy and thick. Um, and I, I it, obviously it's going to struggle more when you're doing autopilot with that. But for this, it's not struggling too bad. 
The other thing that's a lot better is, I think it was two updates ago, the follow distance was a little off. Now, I think I'm set at one car right now, and this is a little bit closer to two car lengths, but I think it's also trying to track where it can move over in front of one of these cars. Yep, so um, it looks like uh, I thought it would slow down to get in front of this car. Okay, so it is. It's slowing down so it can get over in this in front of this car. We'll see if this car... Okay, that car let me in. Thank you. See, it's it's nice when you have nice drivers. So that's another thing. Um, I wish that it, the Tesla would just either move over right when it signaled or it would overtake the car because it was kind of in this weird limbo where it's like, I don't know what I want to do at this moment. In 1,000 feet, take exit 12 on the ride onto Interstate 15 towards Las Vegas. So part of the reason I can actually do this test too is they've painted lines on the freeway on the areas that I've been driving. Uh, I, I, I don't know if, if I have a viewer that's seen my previous videos. I've actually gone over this a couple times where there's no lines whatsoever for a good amount of space. Interstate 15 South ramp on the left towards Los. Now take the Interstate 15 South ramp on the left. Okay, I'll commence talking again. It, <laughs> it kept interrupting me. So this will go a lot slower than this person's gonna like behind me. But um, as I was saying before, in my previous video, I showed that even without lines, the Tesla was actually doing really, really well. See, so I don't like how slow this goes right here. Um, keeping, <laughs> I'm like bouncing all over the place. I apologize ahead of time, but it keeps, it kept me in the lines uh, even though there were no lines there. Now this, this turn is interesting. In this update, it's definitely slowed me down a lot more. I used to be able to go 35 miles an hour around this turn, and now it's gone to like 28 miles, plus it like pumped the brake hard back there. Once again, people are not liking me behind me. I'm sure that person came up on me. Just the Tesla being cautious. This is a more intense merge that happens here, so autopiloting, we're gonna see how that handles it. Once again, so this isn't up to block this either. It'll still do the lane changes. Um, this is up and the flashing, if it wanted me to grab the steering wheel would be right here. Okay, I was wondering when it was gonna merge because this is an exit. Luckily it didn't, I didn't have to intervene, but I got really close. I did not like that, so. This lane will merge over, but we'll see if this person lets me in. Oh, yeah, it's pumping. Oh, God. Okay, it went down to like 55 miles an hour there. Sorry, dude. Tesla's just being a jerk again. <laughs> All right. So I'll probably touch this again because I've got to reset the speed. I know it resets it, but you guys can clearly see we've been driving for longer than 30 seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and just get this back up to 80 miles an hour. And most likely what this is gonna do is take me all the way over into the carpool and I just hope it doesn't, you know, cut in front of somebody who wants to go faster than me. So far we're doing good. That it handled that really good. So back there was the part where there weren't lines before, but it actually still was able to guide itself in the right spots, which was really cool. I was very impressed with that. I don't know if it goes by the map at those points or just is, smart enough to track all the cars around but uh, I never got nervous that it was going to shoot me into the sidewall if I was in the carpool lane or that I was going to run into anybody else in any other lanes. The only times that it got hairy was other cars moving into me um, which I can't really control that so uh, I'm hoping that the, that the Tesla moves over again. Once again I got somebody on my tail coming up pretty close and uh, I'm sure they're not liking the speed that I'm going. Once again, here's the gap in between the steering wheel. I'd be hitting the steering wheel and uh, so my legs aren't touching, legs aren't touching the steering wheel at all. I'm not doing that. Um, so far, I'm actually not upset with how it's been lane changing on this drive. Usually it it goes back and forth between a bunch of lanes a bunch of times. Right here, it used to shoot me all the way over to the right lane, even though I wasn't exiting the freeway. And at this point, it looks like it's it's doing really well. Okay, see, I knew it was gonna get me into the carpool lane as soon as it could, because I have it set for HOV. Just like a good and bad thing. 
a lot, a lot of people like to go faster in this lane, but I am, once again, I'm going at 80. What would you guys think if Tesla added a way that it could recognize cops up ahead and it would auto slow? That's one of the features that I would love. Uh, if I had some type of radar detection or even just knew the lights were up on top since it can sense, you know, stop lights and stuff, uh, might be something that I want to tweet out and see if Elon Musk responds to. Because it would be nice if it auto detected cops. Then I wouldn't have to be nervous. Oh man. Just got nailed by a big old rock. I hope it didn't chip it. I already had two filled. I had that one filled and I had this one filled. And there's one over here I had filled. That's the problem with all this construction. Uh, Utah, the joke with Utah is that there's um, two seasons, you know. There's, you know, winter and then there's construction season. And construction season goes all year round. Doesn't matter, you know. So, all right, so we're about, probably about halfway done with the drive at this point. Once again, still haven't intervened. This isn't the part where I get concerned with intervening at all anyway. And as you could see, if I wanted to like, you know, break the law and do stuff, oh God, this makes me nervous. I wish that guy wasn't over on that side. It actually, that was cool. I don't know if the car noticed that or not, but there were uh, workers over there in that lane, and uh, the Tesla the Tesla actually hit its blinker to move over. Okay, so once again, here's one of the dumb things it does. Like we got a double white line. We're in the HOV lane, and uh, it slowed me down to like 68 miles an hour and hit the blinker, and then just was like, oh, I don't know what to do. I kept you in this lane, even though I shouldn't have. If I wanted to move you over. So let's see if it tries to move me over again right here. So I've thought of a lot of like creative things you could do and I know a lot of people will sit in like their passenger seat and uh, act like the Tesla's driving itself when they're really just using the app and moving it forward at a slow pace. So see, look at that. Like it hit, hit the blinker and then didn't even move out of the lane the entire time. And now it's just like, why? Why is it doing that, right? Um, this, is, this is some of those kinks that autonomy, full autonomy would need to iron out before it got to being perfect and drivable. Not complaining though, because this is still fantastic. And compared to a lot of different technologies out there, Tesla, in my opinion, does it best. And I can't wait till the rework comes up. That's gonna be a few weeks from now, hopefully a couple weeks. Um, I'm hoping before snow happens. I, I'm guessing when it starts to snow, I'm not gonna use full self-driving very often. I'm a very cautious driver in the snow, but I'm excited to see how the Tesla handles in it. Okay, so here's another interesting one. It could have kept me in the carpool lane the whole time, moved me all the way over here. I'm not exiting anytime soon. So it's not because of it exiting that it would be doing that. This is just it doing its thing for whatever reason. I absolutely love that they added the side camera view there. I think I mentioned this in my last video too, but I would love to see if you hit the the blinker or the indicator, it would just pop up which side you're going over. So you, you, you know, you'd get your blind spot detection that way, instead of having to look over your shoulder, because technically you still have to like look over your shoulder. I trust the Tesla more than I trust myself though, to be honest. I'll always put it into autopilot if I want to change lanes and it's busy traffic and I feel like I might run into somebody or I might miss them in my blind spot or they might move over because the Tesla is so much better at detecting that before like a human reacts to something like that and I'm excited to have more cars on the road that have this type of technology so that it can work through it. 
All right, so here's another spot that cops can be. It looks like this car's pacing me pretty good, so I'm happy that I'm behind this car because they'll usually sit behind the wall over here. And it looks like there wasn't one. So either way, I would have been fine, but I'm still glad I'm over in this lane pacing. Now, one of the things I have noticed going through this construction zone is I really hope that it takes me to the far left lane because it does a whole lot better moving around uh, in the construction zone if it's got the wall right next to it. And being in this lane makes me a little nervous because it's going to hover over different lines. So, so far doing what it's supposed to, overtaking slower cars whenever it has an opening. That time I felt like it was a really good overtake too because I wasn't a jerk to the person behind me and you know I didn't like cut them off hard every once in a while because I have Mad Max setting. It will cut them off because that's the more aggressive lane change option. Another thing that I, I watched a video on and uh, forgive me for not giving credit to which Tesla YouTuber it was. They were talking about if you want it in stop and go traffic to drive smoother, you take it out of sport and put it on comfort. So I'm gonna try that the next time I'm in stop and go traffic, which can happen up here. So we might experience stop and go traffic. If that's the case, I might switch that setting to see how it breaks. But they said it's a lot smoother of a drive because it doesn't accelerate really fast and it, it uh, breaks a lot softer, so. Obviously, regenerative braking is primarily how it'll function in that. Okay, cool. Yep, bringing me back over to the carpool lane, which I'm happy about. I want to be closer to the wall as I go through here. So I may or may not, depending on how close I get up there to the other cars, put this... I might touch the steering wheel, right? I haven't touched it yet so far. Other, Oh, I guess I touched it to speed up. I might touch it again to slow it down just as we're going through the construction. Just for safety reasons, I, I want to be able to show you guys that it's fully driving me home, but I also want to be safe at the same time. So if it comes to the safety aspect of it, I'm definitely slowing down. So still don't know if there's a cop right here, but there can be a cop right here. So I'm hoping not. Those cars are going faster than I am. So, okay, no cop there. So I think on the camera, you could see where they would be sitting too. They always pop in those little alcoves, especially the motorcycle cops. All right, so, uh, okay, we're gonna see if I'm gonna touch the steering wheel at all. Right around this corner is where it's gonna start getting a little dicey. And uh, we're still going 80 miles an hour, so I'm not sure that I want to stay going 80 miles an hour. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm dropping the speed down. It's too, too close for my comfort here. So yeah, I got really close to that edge line on the right. I'm going to put it back up to 75 there at least. Um, there's another spot up here that it gets kind of dicey, but hopefully I'm like close enough behind a car that it'll, it'll keep me safe in the lane. So yeah, I'm catching up. As you can see, these are really, really tight lanes though in the construction area. So it's uh, not the funnest to be going through here. And that, that just like super waved it because the lane got wider. Right here, it looks like the, everybody has slowed me down quite a bit. So grateful for that. But right here, uh, this this turn right here is where I get like a little, I'm going to like probably tense up. <laughs> so, okay, come on. All right, that was slow enough. It actually handled it super smooth. Good job, like that. that you know, I'm, I'm telling my Tesla, "Good job, like, good job, Tesla." Um, but <laughs> no, it, it, that was a lot smoother than it has been in the past. That's been a little scary a couple times. Luckily, I, I still have it set at 75. Um, when we get to the open areas outside of this construction zone. 
I'm going to open it back up to 80 and people are going to be flying past me still at 80. That's where, that's where people go like 90. Okay. That got close to the wall too. Woo. It's a random spot to have that happen too. I don't know why it handles some of those a little better than others, but these get kind of uh, crazy. This freeway is going to be super convenient when it's open back up, though. They've widened it quite a bit. There's been a lot of growth in this area, especially this is where everybody's moving in. Um, if you guys are aware of how Utah is set up a little bit, they've got massive companies like Adobe at the point of the mountain. Amazon's also going to have a facility here. Um, Apple was even talking about creating a facility out here in Utah. They call it Silicon Slopes. Uh, and that's exactly what it is. Oh my gosh, that truck over there up in front of me got like inches from hitting that wall. It's a dually and he's going by this semi up here. Holy cow. Woo. This is another one of the ones that I don't really care for. It has multiple lines. So we're going to see. Okay, I might need to take over at some point because these lines confuse the Tesla a little bit. See how there's a line right in the middle of here? it's still pretty visible. Um, that's the good thing about road construction in Utah is they make it as uh, confusing as possible for the Tesla because there's like multiple lanes. See, it's like trying to move me over right now. Okay, this is this is where I'm getting a little nervous. Woo. I'm going past the semi plus the lines aren't like Okay, yep, yeah, see, look at how many lines there are right here. I don't like this. I do not like this at all. Go past the semi. Yeah, look at this. Look at this. Okay. Whew. All right. They at least got a solid line going here now. Whenever they move this freeway, though, they'll, like, shift it around to work on it at night. It changes it. So that's where you actually can see how impressive the Tesla handles all of this. It, it adapts and changes to whatever the freeway is looking like. Other than on that side, heading that way, um, heading north, sometimes it gets super weird with how it's set up and uh, it doesn't like it. So it'll like slow down like it's getting off of a freeway exit. All right, I wanna see if the Tesla is gonna move over. I got this guy on my tail. Like I said, this is where people like really open up on the freeway. Okay, cool. Yep, let's let's get over into the carpooling. Yeah, okay. I don't mind being behind this car. Hopefully it doesn't feel the pressure. This person's gonna zoom past me. See what I mean? People end up going like 90 miles an hour in this part. So I'm actually really impressed with that. It, I that was that I think that was the first time in a while that I've gone through that construction area with no intervention whatsoever other than dropping the speed a little bit right at the start which I won't count it so much as a uh, strike against this video uh, because it would have slowed down a lot because I would have caught up to people and it would have paced me with those people but uh, really really impressed with how well it handled the changes that came across on that. Now it's like home stretch, literally home stretch right here. So everything that the Tesla does in th these moments are gonna be super easy for it. Minus getting off the freeway exit can be a little bit busy. I live uh, pretty close to a university off the freeway. So it can be pretty busy, especially right now with classes being in for people who actually wanna be there. They have online and then they have people in class, but it still makes it so it's a little bit busier heading to my house. couple other things that I want to speculate on is battery days. Uh, what are some of the things that you guys are expecting from that? Uh, what I, I'm, I'm expecting to hear a higher capacity battery or a better way to do it so that the Tesla truck can not only 
charge faster or actually be able to charge that 500 range in a decent amount of time because you figure i've got a wall charger at my house ran it with a 60 amp fuse uh right by the main circuit breaker so it it pulls as much as it possibly can and i think the max that i've seen it get at after this last update was 48 miles that it can charge in an hour most of the time it runs around 43 to 44 and that depends on heat too if it's too hot and it has to keep the battery cool it might run you know less miles but you figure trying to charge the tesla cyber truck if it's down pretty low is going to be crazy <laughs> for that but you could almost go like every other day charging it with my drive at least I don't know if you guys notice this, but on my drive, I drive about 44 uh, miles one way. So it's like 88 miles grand total. In fact, I just hit 50,000 miles. I'll make a video about things that I've noticed in that time. I've put about 17,000 miles on this Tesla, which is insane to think of in the time that I've had it. Um, but I, I will list a few things in that video that I've had to had to work on, had to deal with, uh, the services I've taken it to, um, different things that I've gotten for it. And uh, maybe I'll add, you know, at the same time, just accessories that I have on my Tesla. I do have different things that I've bought and uh, I'll go through that in that video as well. So for those of you who are interested in that, So far, I like, I, I hope you guys like the, you know, quote unquote autonomy that this has had. Gives you a good idea of what this looks like driving. And uh, I'm actually very, very impressed. Other than the weird lane changes that it does every once in a while, it actually is very intuitive and it's good at, you know, noticing if somebody's coming up on your tail and moving over so that they can pass you or overtaking cars. Um, it's, it's done a really good job at that and I've been extremely impressed. Also with the very fact that like, I literally trust this enough, even on my drive, that if I did have the ability, if it were legal, I would be like reading right now or I would be, you know, uh, the goal is to be able to sleep in my car and just wake up at my destination, have an alarm on the thing and I get there, you know, what are you looking forward to in there? Um, I like reading a lot, so getting through a good book in the 40 minutes that it takes me to drive to and from my destination each day would be great to have. I mean, that's a ton of time that I spend commuting that I can earn back, you know? So part of the reason that I wanted it also shows you what robo taxi could es essentially look like, right? You can have people in the back of the car. The car could be trusted enough to be able to do that. Obviously, there's, you know, leaps and bounds that it has to go to in order to make left-hand turns. Or I think in previous videos, if you've seen them, I've showed some pretty interesting intersections that it's had a hard time on. Okay, now right here, you can see something that like really irritates me at these points. Even though I have it capped at the speed limit, I wish it would just speed up because this truck isn't budging. I've got the blinker on, you know, the Tesla's trying to get over and uh, it's not quite far enough away from it. So it's just gonna sit here and keep the blinker going. Luckily it was able to overtake, but you could see how you could easily miss a, an exit by it doing that, right? So I don't like that part of it. I don't wanna miss an exit just because the Tesla can't make up its mind or whether it slows down or speeds up in going around a car. So this is my exit it's gonna take me off of got a big old semi that's merging onto the freeway so this will be fun right here um because i okay cool yeah see that that could have been a situation where it would have been a little bit more dicey but luckily i had it set to 80 so it was going fast enough that it wasn't even affected so off of the freeway it's gonna actually so this forks down here let's see if it goes to the fork side that i need to go to so it slows down S traffic light oh what's that i don't want to hit that okay took over i didn't want to hit that box anyway dang it that kind of interrupted that but it would have come over here 
I, I feel like that box should have been big enough that it would have reacted to it and maybe I didn't give it a, enough time but I just didn't want to run over that box I didn't know it was in it so anyway this this ends the video right here I'm gonna cancel this so it doesn't talk over me it's probably pretty irritating in the video to hear that but I um, hope you guys liked the video I uh, hope you know you you find value in it and uh, you know, hope to see you in the next video. This is a longer video, but if you made it to the end, thank you very much for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next video.